So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while. And it's on Simon Bisley's illustrations from the Bible, a work in progress. Um, I originally bought this when it first came out in 2004. And I bought it because being Christian and being in love with Simon's work, I had to pick this up. And I'm lucky I did because I bought it for the, the face value. And now it's kind of hard to get without spending a lot of money. So I, I, was, I was really fortunate to pick this up. And, you know, right off the bat, you know, the illustration, the, the painting, the, the, the level of expertise, it just pulled me in and I just, I just had to get it and I bought it. And uh, I'm not sure how much I bought it for. It was about 20 bucks. And um, so I was really intrigued because Simon was light years ahead of where I was artistically. And I was nowhere near the expertise and the level of draftsmanship that this man had. And um, before I start this video, I just want to say, if you're listening, Simon, I'm in love with this book. I'm in love with your work. You're an amazing artist. And the things I might say um, may not um, line up with your theology, but I just know that God has a plan for you, my brother. And I know that Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. And we are meant to be with him in the next life. So I just wanted to to put that out there um, because I'm going to be um, talking about how this book came to be and his beliefs. And I truly believe that he has a chance to be with Jesus because the, the, the facts are there. The facts are there in this interview I want to be sharing and the facts are there in this book. And this is a piece of his spirit and this is a, p a piece of his soul. And there were... Um, there are a couple other videos on this book, but it was from a secular fanboy atheist point of view. So I wanted to take it, my spiritual, my spiritual point of view, my spiritual walk with the Holy Spirit, and bring to life what he is trying to, to, his spirit is trying to say, because his spirit is crying out in this artwork. And I know that um, it's a fine line between, you know, heaven and hell. The fine line between walking with Satan and walking with Jesus because the, the Satan is the deceiver and Satan is the angel of light. Satan is not the man with the horns. He comes as someone who is beautiful and he is very subtle. So, so, um, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and get into the book and, and uh, along with the book, I'm, I'm going to go on with, over scripture. So, um, it's a nice beginning. Um, beautiful start of a painting. Again, you know, like the um, the the Vincent Desiderio uh, uh, Grisai studies. You know, with the the shellac. You know, he's using it looks like a raw umber, and then he he's pulling stuff out. And this is definitely oils. This is a man who knows how to paint. Um, and there is also many things which Jesus did. If they should be written, everyone, I suppose, even the world itself, cannot contain the books that should be written. Amen. John 21, 25. So right away, we're starting with scripture from John, talking about Jesus and the great things that he did. You know, this was this is not done by accident. So here we have... The beginning, fall of Lucifer, temptation, cursed earth, exiled, and deluge. Um, and then th this is a work in progress. So I'm, I don't know how much more he has. Okay, now before I get into the work, I, I, want, I just want to sh show you how this book came about. Was this a conscious effort to move away from comics? Into no, not, not the least bit. No, not the least bit. No, no, the, the, origin, the originator of it. I, I, I did ask, uh, ask uh, uh, my, my associate. Uh, and uh, New York said, you know what, he's by my work at the time. And uh, he said, you know, geez, what, what, what do you think I should do? And what do you reckon would be good? And he suggested the Bible. I said, the Bible? He said, well, look at the, look at the, look at the stories. Look at the, look at the uh, epic, epic goings on there. And he was studying guys like Michelangelo and Da Vinci and going back to the rudiments of the art.
So here we, we're starting. And now if you look at your other two videos, um, it goes into the artwork itself because it, it's a very secular atheist view. And they're just looking at the artwork itself and the application. And um, one of the things that um, one of the videos um, suggested was because they don't have the original book was that this part was uh, photoshopped in but I can tell you right now this was all painted in I can see the paint strokes uh, in this and you can just see the um, as far as the artwork is concerned um, you can see the level of expertise of his knowledge of anatomy George Bridgman um, Frazetta uh, and you can see that this man knows how to draw and and um, so inspiring. So uh, this first page, it's uh, Isaiah. This is from Isaiah 14.5. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the Most High, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So this basically shows you, with great beauty, Satan falling from heaven. And you can see, you can see how Satan was Jesus, or Satan was God's, was Yahweh's most beautiful angel. And he presents himself here on earth as the most beautiful angel. But he deceived so many people. And here are his, his followers. He took a third of the angels with him. And they're taking him down with him. And they're pulling him down into gravity. But the reason why God sent Satan to, to, to the earth is because Satan hates us. And God wanted to show him a lesson. Well, if you hate him so much, I'm going to send him down with you. And that's why we have Satan walking into and from the earth. And there's a, some, some stuff that Simon talks about that I don't, I don't agree with. And then here you can see the deformity and of he doesn't have a fully formed wing and it just shows the the and, and then the fallen the fallen wings here and death and the ugliness that he is he is he has um descended to and he's he is making an oath to take down mankind because he hates us so much Um, okay, so now we're into Adam and Eve. And here you can see that he reworked this. This seems like the same drawing, he, except he, he worked, reworked the head from kind of like a traditional stake to more a more demonic um, human face. And so we've got scripture here, Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. For God knows that in the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. So also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Now, th this, is, this is the classic story of Adam and, Adam and Eve. The deception of Satan, the deception of temptation. Whether Simon knew what he was doing or not, he says everything in this book is a chunk of his spirit. His spirit is laid out on this page in this book. And I know for a fact that God is yearning for for this artist's voice to talk for him and he's talking for him in, in this book and you know the secular world loves this the secular world loves this but it just shows the the deception of satan and the beauty of this line work the beauty of the charcoals the beauty of the pencil and you could you could just tell how much fun he's having with this how much um expertise he has in his field and then this is the fall this is the fall of man and this is 
the sin that envelops the world. This is disease. This is de deformity. This is birth defects. This is everything in the world that is of the, of the devil. Everything, every sin, every depravity is represented right here. Sickness, death, destruction. Um, and, and, just, and I just love what's going on here. I mean, I, you could just sit here for hours and hours and hours just looking at one piece, you know. Um, and then, you know, this is definitely um, what the fall would look like. And he's, he's illustrated so beautifully. This is Genesis... Three, seventeen through 18 but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat nor shall you touch it lest you die then the serpent said to the woman you shall not surely die for God knows that in the day you eat in your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil and isn't that like the world today people consider themselves, themselves gods the complexity and the detail of sin in this world is overwhelming for me but God sees everything. And he just shows like the emotion, you know, in in the interview that um, he talks about, he talks about emotion, putting his emotion on here. I mean, the, the, way, the, way, the way it works is I'm not the greatest draftsman in the world. I ain't bad though. It, but, you know, it's, a, it's emotion. Bringing the emotion across, you know, the power. Genesis chapter 3, verse... 23, 24. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, I, I don't see a flaming sword anywhere, because um, that was a message... Um, I heard recently of the flaming sword where you try to get past it and it won't let you past anything. The flaming sword is just that, a sword that's flaming and if you try to get, if you try to pass into heaven, it's going to block your way, no matter which way you go. But I don't see it illustrated here. But it shows perfectly um, the um, the nightmare that's about to embark and he, uh, he envelops um, hell so perfectly, you know, and he knows, he knows how to draw and paint. And um, these look like um, like washes. Okay, and this is um, Genesis chapter seven, ten through twelve, twenty one, twenty two. And it came to pass for s after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth, in the sixteenth hour, in the six hundredth year of Noah's life. In the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of the heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and all the flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and of every man. All those, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, all of all that was in the dry land died. So as you can see, there's Noah's Ark and there's the great tornadoes hitting, hitting, hitting the, uh, the ocean, creating a stir. And I, I guess there's a lone man, I don't know if that's Satan. I don't know who that is. But you could see that this the level of focus and then here you can see the um the tornadoes just destroying the earth and then here are the people just crying out and um i'm not sure who that is and again here's more of the of the uh, the flood, the great flood, and 
just the level of excellence that are, that are in these drawings is just so overwhelmingly good. And then here's like, um, you know, just a kind of like a, a study of figures, you know, trying to make it fun. And now here we are in um, Genesis 22, 1, 2 through 10. And it, came, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy, your only son, who you love so much, and get yourself in the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called upon him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon this lad, neither do you anything unto him. For now I know that you fear me, says God. Now that I know that you fearest God, seeing that has not withheld my son, thy only son, from me. And, um, you know, we need to fear God. I don't care what you think. And here's in Judges 15, 14 through 15. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his, upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands, and he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men whereof. So this is the slaying of Samson. Uh, I believe it's Samson. Yeah. Samson just slaying. You know, just, just going to town. There's Samson. And um, just the expertise of the human figure he has, not only in... Um, the, the levels of focus, background, foreground, middle ground, but just the, um, the level of expertise in the chalk. And then here we on Judges, and then the Lord of the Philistines, Philistines gathered them together to offer the sacrifice unto Dagon their God, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And... And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has delivered unto, unto our hands our enemy and to destroy our country, which slew many of us. And it came to pass that he may make a sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport. And they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the, the lad that had held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars where upon the house stands, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there upon the roof there were three thousand men and women that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, on which it was borne up, of the one his right hand, the other on his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords, and upon all the people that were there on therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in life. And then there's David. Now, um, he really makes him look like a giant, which I can, you know, understand. It's kind of like, um, like a representation. Um, but I just love the, um, I love the design of Goliath. And just the, um, 
the representation of it. I don't know. I know David was really young, um, but Samuel, um, Samuel 17, 45, 48, and 50. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. And it came to pass when the Philistine rose and came and drew nigh to David, that David hasted, hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand on his bag and took out a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead and the stone sunk into his forehead and it fell upon his face in the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and stone and smote with the Philistine and slew him. And there was no sword in his hand, but there was no sword in the hand of David. And then here's the, there's like a color fold out. Let me see it. Really nice color fold out. And um, you know, you can see the Philistines laughing, and then the Israelites, they're just looking in wonder. And God's God's blessings were on David. And uh, David cut his head off. I'm not sure. And now he doesn't show it. Um, and here's Exodus. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back to bit by, by a strong east wind all the night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were all, the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. After the Egyptians, after the Egyptians pursued, and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all the Pharaoh's horses, and his chariots, and his horsemen. So this is when the um, the Red Sea departed. And you, he's got like this, he's got octopus, he's got fish, all kinds of fish. And man, just the expertise, man. I'm just, I'm just in wonder of this artwork. The, the artwork is just, the artwork is just uh, so amazing. And then just the, the, uh, the, uh, the water, the wall of water. And then here's, here's Moses right there. There's Moses. And he says, I won. I won. All right, now we're into uh, Jesus, the Annunciation. Um, Luke 1, 26, 36. In the sixth month, six month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her, and he said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled at saying, and he cast in her mind what matter of salutation that should be. And the angel said unto her, For fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall name him Jesus. He shall be great, and he sh and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. End of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, since I have not seen a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the Holy Spirit shall most high will overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called Son of God. And behold. Thy cousin Elizabeth, who has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is six months with her, who was called barren. So here is just, you know, the, um, the Annunciation, um, the Angel Gabriel, and um, here's a painting, really nice painting. Just flowing, flowing fabrics. You know, and here, you know, this is her. This might be her her prayer when she's praying. She has two flowers here, and just the hay and just the beauty, it's such beauty. Uh, Matthew. Two, one through nine, eleven. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, 
saying, Where is he that is born kind of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come down to worship him. When Herod the kind had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. This is a really nice nativity scene, a, a really nice, a beautiful, a really beautiful, beautiful drawing. And then here is the wise men bowing down. Such beauty, such such glory. And the light that shines. That looks more like an infant. And then when Hera came to slay, um, so it's Matthew uh, 2, 12, 13, 16. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Hera, they departed into their own country another way. And then when they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother to flee Egypt, that there may be unto them. Bring Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof. From two years old and under, according to the time which he diligently inquired of the wise men. So here we can see the... Um, um, Simon calls it... Um, he, Simon calls it a contradiction. I just think because it's like, uh, it's in as all, I mean, the thing is, it's all a contradiction. You know, you talk about, you know, evil and good and bad. But I call it, um, I call it, um, um, contrast. You need contrast. We need contrast. Everything just can't be white. Everything just can't be black. Um, so the, this is like the angel, the angels coming down to tell Joseph to flee to Egypt. And then this was when Herod sent um, his soldiers to kill every child and the wickedness and the evil this man had. And he didn't die a very pleasant death either. And here's extension of the death the death of uh, all the children. <clears throat> all right, now we're into Jesus the man, the temptation of Lazarus. Um, a bunch of al alternate drawings, um, different sizes, different... Uh, different takes of uh, uh, Jesus when he went into his ministry, when he came forth and presented himself. Um, so let's get into the scripture. Uh, Matthew 11, chapter, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. Come unto me, all ye that labor and come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and lean of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So God came down, sent his son, a humble servant, to gather his flock, to gather his sheep into the kingdom, because we are nothing without him. We we are lost without him. And and we're kidding ourselves if we if we deny him and make ourselves our own God. But this is definitely something that uh, has substance. And, you know, in the interview, Simon Bisley says, you know, when he, when he draws these, he put all, puts all his emotions in here. He becomes that character. He becomes this. And, you know, it's like drawing is almost praying. And there's different variations. Um, different paintings chalk you know the vine charcoal I, it's probably vine charcoal a mixture of vine charcoal ink um, and charcoal pencil 
So this is when Jesus fasted for 40 days. Um, um, and then Jesus, uh, so Matthew uh, 4, 1 through 11, then, uh, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are a son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread. And Jesus answered him and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge of you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written, Again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. So, um, let's see what we have here. No, that must be Lazarus. So it, it shows him tempting God, um, kingdom. So, you know, to me, this, this piece of scripture basically says, you know, when Jesus fasted and he went out to the wilderness, Jesus, the devil said to him, you know, turn these stones into bread. And he was basically telling Jesus, you can stop this fast. Go eat. Stop this fast, this nonsense, go eat. And Jesus refused. And then the devil said, if you're a son of God, throw yourself down on this mountain. And he's basically telling Jesus to kill himself. This is the nature of Satan. And then the third time he said, you know, bow down to me and I'll give you whatever you want. And don't we see that every day in entertainment? Don't we see it every day in... Um, the media, in politics, it's the nature of Satan. But you know, I'm, I, I can learn so much from these 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 drawings. And then here's the story of Lazarus. And Jesus was, you know, Lazarus' um, sister sent for Jesus. Lazarus was was already dead, and Jesus. Uh, was sent for, and he's, he 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 um, he didn't go right away. And then when he came, Mary Martha said, "Why why did you why did you stay away so long? Our, our our brother's dead, you know." And Jesus wept, and he went into the tomb, and he raised Lazarus from the dead. And so the scripture says, that, "And I know that you always hear me." But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Um, but here, you know, he's just, I think he's, um, you know he's practicing his, you know his expertise in anatomy. I don't see, he, his I don't see any, any, any cloth or any wrappings that were let go. But you see death. You know, um, again I, I like, is there like a scratchy like scratching? I like the scratching effect in here. Okay, so now we're into the Passion. Uh, John 18, 33 through 38. Then Pilate entered the Praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, Are you the King of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you about are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? 
your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is the truth hears my voice. And Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault to him at all. And then John 19.5, Then Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to him, Behold the man. Now it's not purple, but, you know, it just represents the blood of Jesus, I believe. You know. And then the scourging. Matthew 27, 27 through 31. Then the soldiers of the gov governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered their whole ga garrison around him. And they stripped him and put him a scarlet robe around him. Then they had twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head and the reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat upon him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. So, um, yeah. So it just shows the scourging, the level of expertise of, um, his knowledge of anatomy, his knowledge of, uh, of drawing, um, just the beauty, total beauty. Uh, Luke 23 through 27. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which all bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, leave not for me, but for yourselves and for your children. Blessed are the barren, and wisdom are born, and breasts never nursed. Then they shall say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and the hills cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what happen when it is dry? And there were two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. Um, I don't see the other, the other malefactors, um, but you see a devil right there. There's, there's a devil, um, and uh, yeah, the manifestation of a devil there. And this seems to be this, maybe this is a th almost like a, a thumbnail to much a much bigger piece. This is an amazing piece, right? And you, you you could tell, like, just the, um, you know, the weight of the cross. And I, I do believe that's, this is the end. This is the, yeah, the end. And the end, uh, part of the ends. <clears throat> uh, John 19, 19 through 20. And Pilate wore a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh in the city, and was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Um, I don't see, I don't see that written. Uh, again, there's that devil. I wonder if he's in here. I don't see him there. But man, there's like. There's so much detail in these drones. I don't know if these are the original sizes. I doubt it. Um, but there's so much detail. All right. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know what they do. And they parted his remnant and cast lots. Um, I don't see them casting lots. But it's just amazing. It's just, I mean, just so beautiful. The the level of expertise in his drawing. Like like I said, when I bought this in 2004, it was light years ahead of me, of of, of where I was. But now I think I'm, I'm kind of catching up. Um, I'm kind of catching up as far as level of um, draftsmanship in my own drawing.
and it's just uh, just the um, here is uh, now, uh, John nineteen twenty five to twenty seven. Now there stood the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopius, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Um, I don't see the disciple there. There's a lot of death. There, there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. And um, really, really beautiful stuff. Uh, Mark fifteen thirty three to thirty four, and when the sixth hour has come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" And when Jesus cried with a loud voice, he said, "Father, unto the hands I commend my spirit." And having said this, he gave up his ghost. Now Jesus was naked on the cross. Uh, he was naked and uh, was beyond recognizable. Um, but we always put the the, the cloth on there. Um, And uh, it's just so amazingly beautiful artwork. Mastery of chalk. And here it looks like just uh, some more renditions. Um, just more of this, the same views. Um, I think he talks about it in, in his interview. We did several depictions of the crucifixion. It was yeah. one of the... One of the scenes you focused on pretty extensively. Yeah. Various different angles. Looking at it. I was trying ways. to find. I was trying to find there, like uh, I, I was still trying to find a perfect image, a perfect, perfect, perfect crucifixion image. I mean, you know, whether you're, you're Christian or not, whether you believe in, in Jesus or not, whatever you believe in, you just find that that perfect image. You know, that classical image. Because someone, really with, with, you know, suffering for what, what you know, what he, he died, prepared to die and suffer a death torture. You, know, you got to respect that, even if it's true or not. You know. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of views here of the crucifixion. And the sixth hour there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. This is Luke twenty, Luke twenty three forty four through thirty five. Um, and it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. Um, here he looks like he's experimenting with markers. Um, looks like some kind of really thin paper. I get the blues, the blues and the reds, the, um, the contrast. Um, this is, and you know, Jesus was already dead, and you know, usually they break their legs, um, but Jesus was already dead, so they put the lance inside just to make sure he was gone. Um, another thing, too, um, in, in the history is showing us that, um, that. The feet were, um, the feet were uh, nailed in through the ankles. They were nailed in through the ankles. That this wasn't correct, and I believe it was through his wrist too. But we all drew it through the through the hands. Um, and it's just different renditions of the crucifixion. Now they're taking Jesus down from the cross. Um, 
This is John 19, chapter 38 through 40. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He that came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds of weight. Then he took the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with spices as a manner of the Jews is to bury. Different uh, renditions of Jesus being taken down from the cross. An epic scale. You know, and I could see, you know, just the, um, you know, the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the level of ease that he did these with, you know, he was, he was so, he was such an expert and he still is an expert, you know, but, um, Doing these, you know, oh, there's there's a, a Frazetta, there's a Frazetta silhouette there. Uh, just the level, level uh, you know, the, the ease that he probably did these with. You know, because you build up, you know, you, you build stuff up, you know, when you, when you draw on the right side of the brain. And there's just so many different renditions of this. And then this is the resurrection. I laid Jesus in the tomb. And he rose. He rose and he sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Luke uh, 24, uh, 45 through 53. Then he said, and Jesus said unto them, These are the words which I have spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And then he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And here's just different renditions, you know, showing is the the Frazetta, um, the Frazetta-like um, chaos of bodies. You know, the chaos, and then the peace, and the power. Um, just, just more the same rendition of um, what we just saw. Uh, it looks like a, it looks like uh, this looks like. Okay, uh, I wish they would put these side by side, but I don't know if you could see 
he went in and, and revised this one, kind of like what Ferzetta did. I'm not sure it's the same drawing. Um, and if he just traced over it and redid a new one. But these are the same drawing. And then this is just uh, Jesus uh, being taken up into into heaven. Actually, he descended into hell for three days. I mean, that would have been cool if he would have drawn, like, you know, Jesus walking through hell, taking the keys. And I think these are just different renditions of that. And then here in Revelation, um, Revelation 6, 1 through 8. Uh, now I saw when the Lamb opened the, one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice, uh, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. The second seal... When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, that there was given to him a great sword. And the third seal, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a Daenerys, and three quarts of barley for a Daenerys, and do not harm the oil and the wine. And he opened up the fourth seal, and I heard a voice from the living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed him, and power was given to him over a fourth of the earth, to kill with a sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. And um, so the, the, these are just two two drawings of the of the four horsemen. And um, <clears throat> I believe that's it with the scriptures. Um, that's all the scriptures for this. And then he goes into the saints. Um, Saint Sebastian, Saint Anthony, and Saint George. So Saint uh, Sebastian, yeah, Saint Sebastian was a martyr. He was tied to a tree and um, killed with arrows. I really like this. I really like what's going on here. And then we have uh, Saint Anthony. Um, St. Anthony is the saint of lost things. I mean, uh, th this is a Catholic, this, this is Catholic stuff here we're talking and getting into. Um, yeah. Really, really cool stuff. This is, this is more like Catholic stuff here. This is like dark Catholic stuff going on here. But I can definitely learn from this. Here we got kind of stuff like, um, it's kind of like fantasy going on here. This is um, St. George. Um, he was, he's, I don't know, there's some, some Muslim stuff going on here. I'm not, I'm not familiar with, with St. George. But I can see why Simon would want to draw him because he's definitely into like the fantasy stuff. Uh, you know, the dragons and stuff. Very fantasy type type stuff and then the Coliseum um, just Coliseum drawings very Frazetta like stuff here um, Christians being fed to the lions you know it'd been cool you know Christians were also um, they were burned like candles to light the city um, there's so much so much going on the Bible is, there's so much going on with the Bible, and this is so, so beautiful. I mean, when you look at this stuff, you just marvel at it for hours.
outstanding piece. And then it ends, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other, yet he cannot serve God and mammon. And basically the scripture is saying you can't serve God and money. Money is the root of all evil. Money is the reason why the world it is today. Money is the why we are where we're at in these times. So yeah, that's it. Um, now, um, you know, he, he talks about, um, he talks about Jesus and he talks about the devil. Um, in the, you know, he put a piece of his soul in here and, you know, through the interview, I realized that you know, Simon is not Christian. He's, uh, he seems more like an agnostic atheist more than anything. And, um, you know, I pray that, uh, Lord Jesus, that you touch Simon in a way special because this work, this work right here is, is honoring you. It's honoring the Bible. It's honoring. It's not just stories. It's, it's, it's a spiritual realm that we're, we're walking into. And, you know, we're, we're so, we're so like, um, spoiled with technology. We're just spoiled with the television and, and, and just the, the technologies and the advancements of, of, of stuff in the world that we forget where we come from. So, um, you know, I just want to say, say a prayer. Just Jesus, just, I just ask you to touch Simon, touch him Lord in, in a way that he's never felt before. Touch him and show him how real you are. Bring him to the road of Damascus, God, bring him to the road of Damascus, God, the way you did to Saul. And I thank you, Father, for what, this work. I thank you, Father, for the inspiration that this book gives me. I thank you, Father, for, for these things. And I just thank, thank you, Lord. So, um, so thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, uh, consider subscribing because it helps a small YouTuber like myself get into the algorithm of the YouTube machine. And, um, you know, um, God bless you. And God loves you. And, you know, um, I'm definitely going to get more into my art into in you know i'm still going to do prophetic art but i'm going to go i'm going to go back to you know, studying the masters because um you know in um you know that's that's where i feel like i'm, I'm being led right now so um so again thank you for watching and um god bless you